Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're going to try to reload the 44 Remington Magnum. And to go through the process of setting up the dies and all that is what we're covering today. So today, I have the Hornady. Um, it's a three die set. So what we have in the three die set, it basically, we have, we have our decapping pin, flaring die, which if you look inside, it's a bell-shaped uh, type of configuration to help flare out the inside of the case mouth to receive the new bullet. The last die is our seating die right here. This is our seating die and this right here plunger helps to pilot the bullet and guide it square up into the die. What you want to do is to make sure your decapping die that you have the decapping pin out 3 16 of an inch from the end of the, the die body and that the collet inside or the expander ball is sitting back enough so that it can clear the bottom of the case. Take your die, run it into the press, just get it started and run your ram up all the way into the die. Screw your die down until you come in contact with the shell plate. Once you come in contact with the shell plate, then lift your ram arm up, removing it from the base of the die, and screw your die down about a quarter turn and tighten this lock nut. Run the ram all the way up, make contact, and it should just slightly cam. So what you want when you run this ram up, it hits the base of the die and it slightly cams down. That's a perfect die adjustment. This die is a carbide die and it does not require lube on a straight box case. However, what we're going to do today is I'm going to lube it and the reason I do that is um, I'm trying to extend the overall case life. Um, a little bit of lube on the case is, has less friction on the brass and we're going to extend the overall case life by doing so. So run this up into the die. To set up our expander die, we'll just run it into the die a couple turns, then we'll stop, put your shell back into the shell plate, run it all the way up to the top. Screw down the expander all the way down until you hit to the case mouth, the end of the case mouth. Once you hit the case mouth, lift it all the way up and run your die down about an eighth of a turn at a time until you properly expanded the, and belled out the end of the brass right here. So you could see right here, it's it's just barely taking the bullet. We need to expand it just a little bit more. So run it down another eighth of a turn or so and run it up into the die. And keep doing these steps until you have the proper bell expansion on your brass. That's about perfect right there. So it's a very slight bell. It's hardly noticeable. You can barely feel it on the end of the case mouth when you slide your finger over the top. We want, we want to move this brass very minimally, maybe a couple thousandths. We don't want to move it like 20 thousandths or an exaggerated bell out of the end of the case mouth. It'll shorten the life of the brass. We just want enough to run the bullet up into the uh, bullet seating die and, and have it seat without crimping the brass. Sometimes it'll compress the brass if you don't have the bell wide enough to receive the bullet. Okay, I'm referring to my Nosler's reloading manual and it, sh it shows right here that the overall length of the bullet seated based on the SAMI spec 1.610. So what we're going to do is seat the bullet to that SAMI spec. We're going to run our seating die into the press. To do that, 
we will need an empty shell casing and insert it into the shell plate. Run your way up. Now, screw your bullet seating die down until you touch the case mouth. Once we make contact with the case mouth, we'll start with backing it off one turn and just lock this ring. So we backed it off one turn from the end of the case mouth and what we want to do what we want to do back off this seating stem insert the bullet and run it up into the die slowly until we make contact now we've seated the bullet a little bit you can see right here we've seated it a little bit and the cantilever is still exposed so we need to go a little bit more and keep adjusting the die until our overall seating depth has reached SAMI specs. So I've set my calipers up and you can see the bullet has a long way to go yet for the overall seating depth. So we'll keep adjusting the die until we have the overall length that we desire. Okay, we're almost there. Looks like it still has another ten thousandths to go. Okay, we have seated the bullet to the proper spec. Now, the next step will be to take the stem and back it off a couple turns. Loosen this lock ring and run it down a quarter turn. We're trying to establish a crimp on the bullet. So run it all the way up and see if we have a crimp on the bullet. There is a slight taper crimp. I'd like a little bit more you don't want it exaggerated, but there is a slight crimp on it right now. So what I'm going to do is turn the die down another eighth of a turn. Run it all the way up. Check your bullet. And I, I now have the proper crimp on the bullet. So the next thing, put it back into the shell plate. Run it all the way up, back to where it was crimped. And this seating stem right here, run it down until you hit the top of the bullet. And now we're ready for production reloading. This die is set up to do every round. You can keep your, your spent case and bullet as a model so that every time when you run this die and you're going to to load another batch of ammo just run this die until you hit the top of the case first and then run your seating stem down until you make contact with a bullet and you have a very repeatable overall length of your bullet Now we have a perfect round to go to the range. Again, thank you for joining my channel today. Please leave me feedback so I can better serve your needs in the future. Have a great day.